Hey guys, older gentleman hitting on you at the club here with another magic trick tutorial. This one is one of those easy tricks that you could use to fool people into thinking that you are better than you actually are. If you're new to the channel, you should solidify your virginity by clicking on the subscribe button to make sure that you are always up to date with the best YouTube cake based pork magicians. So this trick in particular is gonna employ the use of a very old principle that dates back to the late 1800s. So you know what, if it worked for them, it's gonna work for you with your iPhone and your grinding or whatever. And also, don't forget that I'm still giving away a signed deck of Jazz Stripes cards. So make sure to look at the link below to find out how you too could win one of these hot decks of playing cards. I'll be revealing the winner soon. Oh boy. So get in there while you still have the, the chance. Well, anyways, that's enough yapping to extend the length of the video. Let's get to the trick. Yes, the pain makes me feel alive. Oh, hey, hey there. Uh, I didn't expect you guys back so soon. Uh, well, you guys came here for a card trick and I just came here. So for this trick, you actually don't need all the cards. Uh, you only need 10 of them. You only need a little bit of these cards. So let's make sure that we're counting the appropriate cards. Uh, I actually didn't count them. I just guessed there. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. The rest, of course, don't matter. We're only gonna need these 10 playing cards to successfully accomplish this trick. See, usually, Magicians use more cards to try to deceive you, but not me, not pick cake. I'll never lie to you, baby. So you mix up the cards, and if you're feeling inclined, you could even have the spectator mix it up. But ultimately, you're gonna hand them the pile of cards, and you're gonna ask them if they have ever had their hearts broken, of which they should respond, wow, that's a very personal question for a card trick. And then you should respond, no, it's definitely within the realm of questions magicians ask because they lack basic social interaction skills. Well, luckily for you today, we're gonna find you the card that loves you the most so your heart won't be broken. Uh, so do me a, a favor, sir, and the spectator takes the cards in their hand. Take the top card and put it on the bottom of the stack and they go ahead and do that. Now say loves me. They, they obviously repeat because they have no choice. You're showing them a card trick. Next, you instruct them to take the next card and throw it out as you tell them, loves me not. And of course, the spectator deals the card onto the table and they repeat this process. Loves me, loves me not. I'm putting them in my pocket just for the sake of this. Loves me, loves me not. Loves me, loves me not. Loves me, loves me not. This is a process that's hopefully one that the spectator will take with jubilation and glee. Loves me. Loves me not, loves me, loves me not, loves me, loves me not, and then finally, loves me, loves me not, until the spectator is left with one card in their hand, and it happens to be the Ace of Spades. And of course, with no switch, there are no other cards in my pocket. These cards would have been dealt on the table, but it just so happens I... Uh, don't want to get a table here. They pick the ace of spades, which happens to be the only card that's uh, not a court card among the other cards here. You see all these other cards? They're court cards. And uh, the ace of spades is the only one that's not, uh, that's not a court card. You see that? It's the only one that's not a court card. So they picked the one card that truly is their card of destiny. Uh, a true love story in the making um hi my name's mike and if you're sitting there watching this tape smoking your cigarette well hit the fast forward button because i don't smoke and i don't like people who do smoke i'm not afraid to get sand on my tuxedo if you're not afraid to let the wind mess your hair up a little bit when i take the top down so luckily for you guys this is a self-working trick which means that the trick pretty much works itself however wouldn't you like to be able to do tricks that aren't necessarily self-working. Well, luckily for you, there's the Pick K Card Academy, where every week you get two videos on tricks, theory, moves, and history of magic, taking you from an absolute loser to a complete 
winner a uh, loser new videos are uploaded every tuesday and thursday and there are already over 60 videos that you could already start to take a little bit of a perusal at which takes you from even learning the magic jargon to the basics of holding a deck of cards so go ahead and learn how to hold your deck properly today look at the link in the description for more information but for this particular trick it's a very easy self-working card trick using the down under deal a principle that goes from my understanding all the way back to the late 1800s so it's one of those older things and uh, pretty much a trick works itself however i will show you a method of allowing the spectator to shuffle the cards which is a little bit more advanced it's definitely for the level uh 17 virgins out there and not the self-working magicians that would uh, like not to work to do this trick so for this all you're going to do is take a, a group of court cards uh nine of them specifically and the ace of spades that's the setup right here this should actually be the thumbnail picture if i was a basic youtuber magician i'm missing the tattoos though i need the i need the skull on the back of my hand so anyways the position that this ace of spades needs to be in in order for the trick to work is fifth from the top of the deck so what you do to ensure that that card is fifth from the top of the deck is that you place it on top and then you add four cards on top of it now it's fifth and that's exactly where it needs to be so if you choose not to let the spectator shuffle it's as simple as just doing a little bit of a false shuffle here so all you do is that you hold the cards in this overhand position in the right hand and you're going to use your left thumb to count the cards singly onto the left hand just like this and you do this twice and guess what that leaves the cards in the exact same position with the ace of spades still fifth from the top of the stack now if you want to deal these cards from the top of the deck onto the table you're going to need to reverse the stack so the ace of spades needs to be six from the top of the deck so that's one two three four five and six the reason for this is because when you deal the cards onto the table this is going to reverse the order and place that card fifth from the top of the deck so that's something you might want to take in consideration if you want to start with these cards on top of the deck and you want to deal them yeah you see your boy pig cake takes everything in consideration uh, so now uh all you need to do is deal the cards in the appropriate fashion which is a down under deal but you're playing it off here as loves me loves me not so you instruct the spectator to take the top card put it underneath the stack and say loves me and then you instruct them to take the next card deal it onto the table and say loves me not now it's important that you don't have them throw the cards haphazardly because it is going to ruin the surprise at the end where uh, all the cards end up being dirty court cards um so that's something you don't want to ruin but you have them deal the card onto the table in this case i'm just going to put it in my pocket and you have them repeat the process so they take the next card loves me loves me not and you have them do this for all the cards this seems like a random process however in reality all it's going to do is that it's going to take that fifth card and circulate it through the rest of the cards and actually that's going to be the last card that ends up in your hand or rather the spectator's hand at the end of the procedure so that's going to be how they pick this particular card out of the rest of them and of course you say this is your card sir the card of your love the card that loves you the most and i'm so glad you didn't pick the other uh, court cards because uh, you pick the only ace of spades among the court cards those dirty dirty court cards uh, and then you have a nice little bit of a conclusion to your self-working card trick now what if you want to have the spectator shuffle well there are two ways to go about this number one is by marking the ace so what that means is that you're just going to take a little the little nub of a of a, a dried shih tzu and you're going to use that to draw a little bit of a dot on both sides here so once you do that this ace of spades is going to be marked so that if the spectator happens to shuffle the cards guess what all you have to do is look for the mark cut that card fifth and you're good to go but if you don't have a mark for this particular card you could just do it as follows the ace of spades is going to be fifth from the top of the stack like we discussed earlier and now you're going to have the spectator help you shuffle the cards so what you do is that you take the top five for yourself you hand them these and the spectator can mix these up as best they can of course keeping them face down and while you're doing that all you have to do is keep the ace of spades 
on the bottom. So you can do whatever shuffle you want as long as that ace of spades stays on the bottom. The easiest way to do this is just by squeezing this ace so that when you come and do the shuffle, it stays on the bottom. You see that? It's uh, what magicians call sleight of hand and what ordinary people call virginity. So once you are done doing that, all you have to do at this point is get a pinky break right there above the ace of spades. I do that in the traditional buckle style. And this is gonna get transferred onto the left thumb in the right thumb finger break. Now what happens here is that when you ask the spectator to give you back their stack, you're gonna just briefly have these stacks come in contact. And guess what? What that does is that that allows you to deposit the ace on top of this pile, which now you could tell the spectator, you know what? Why don't you shuffle these cards too? So it's an afterthought that you allow them to shuffle the cards that you supposedly had in your hand as well. And now the spectator gives these a mix. You drop those on top and you're in the position you need to be in to, to do the trick because guess what? It's fifth, it's still fifth from the top. So that's just a way of having the spectator shuffle apparently the cards and you still maintain the order. I want you to go ahead and mix those up too. And they mix it up. Guess what? Ace of spades is exactly where you need it to be. Uh, and that's the trick, man. That's the trick, man. That's the, that's the trick. That's it. That's all you guys have to do. It's very easy. It's self-working. It's one of those uh, ones you could bust out if you don't want to do any work, but you know, it still hits hard and still uh, it allows for a little bit of by, by, by pattern, by product uh, between you and the spectator. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thank you guys for uh, joining me in this journey. Hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, if not, then, um, well, I guess this is goodbye. I'll leave you with a little bit of advice. If you go outside and you see the mailman is there, remind them that they could also be a male woman if they choose uh, to do that. I'm going to go figure out different ways to use uh, Nicorette gum to curb my addiction to chewing.